Okay, in this video, I want to show you, by demonstration, how to rip an article. And by rip an article, I mean take a peer-reviewed or scientific or academic article and without reading it end-to-end -end or beginning-to-end, uh, get a sense of what it's about so that you can write a short summary about it and then integrate it with other similar articles um, so that you can organize all of your literature review um, as you're writing an article. Now this is something that I do with my students in an advanced research methods class, um, but rather than make them read 18 articles, we practice looking at an article um, and not puzzling over the 25, 35 pages, but seeing if they can't really quickly get a sense of what it's about. And if they find that it's a topic that's specific to what it is that they want to do or, or what they're interested in studying, then it might behoove them to read it carefully um, and see what they can't learn from the authors. So I've pulled up an article. Um, this is one that I've already read before, so you can call me out on that. As you can see, it's highlighted. But I picked one from 2021, so this is pretty recent. And I'm just going to take you through my process. And so this is on a topic that I'm interested in, so it fits within self-determination theory, which is a positive psychology of motivation. Um, and specifically how that applies in the classroom. So the title of this is Internalization of Mastery Goals. Internalization means it's taken on within a person, so the person takes this on as their own intrinsic goal of mastery goals. Mastery being um, really um, not, not just learning a topic or learning a skill, but mastering that skill. So this is as far as you can go with development. And so what's a differential effect of teachers' autonomy, support, and control? So if a, a teacher is supportive uh, of those students or controlling those students, what best leads to um, mastery, their internalization of mastery? So this is just reading the, the title and getting a sense of what it's about. So the first little part here is a summary of what the article is about. And so this is separate from the article. It's called the abstract. And then the article starts right here. So I'm going to read the abstract and see um, what the authors propose to do. So two linked studies explored whether students' perceptions differentiate between teachers' autonomy, support, and control when presenting mastery goals and the outcomes of these two practices. In terms of students' internalization of mastery goals and their behavioral engagement, I will say this is very long and wordy. Um, but looking at the authors, perhaps English is not their first language. So this is a little obtuse. Um, if you're having trouble following along, that would be why. So it looks like I highlighted this as being important. So there's two studies. One sought to validate a new instrument. That means um, in order to, to hand out like a questionnaire, to so know whether or not the questionnaire that's supposed to measure anxiety actually measures anxiety, you need to validate it, and that takes a really long time. You have to give it to hundreds of people, see if each of the items for anxiety actually correlate with other existing objective measures of anxiety. So it sounds like this article does a little bit of validation, um, which I'm not terribly interested in at this point. The second study demonstrated within and between classroom levels perceptions of teachers' autonomy support for mastery goals related to students' mastery goals enforcement and behavioral engagement. So it looks like one actually tested an instrument the next showed that autonomy support led to um, improvement in mastery goals. Let's make sure this is consistent. Okay, more description. Okay. Going back to the title here, it looks like autonomy support is correlated to the internalization of mastery goals. So that would actually be um, just looking at it that quickly, what's the article about, um, here is what I would do. And so I've only spent like a minute and a half with the article. I would write something like, authors validate a new test for, let me see exactly what the test is about. Oh, students' perceptions of teachers' autonomy support. And I noticed, so this is a plural, teachers, multiple teachers, and then the little possessive, so plural, possessive, 
these authors write so many plural possessives. Again, it's kind of like a cumbersome way of writing. Um, I, I don't know that English was their first language. Authors validate new tests for students' perceptions of teachers' autonomy support and find that autonomy support is positively correlated with internalization of mastery goals. Now I'm double checking to make sure I haven't missed something. Alright, so control predicted disengagement. Okay. Yeah, so just looking at the abstract, um, that's the, the quick summary of the article. So let me look at that again. Summary, authors validate a new test for students' perceptions of teachers' autonomy support and find that autonomy support is positively correlated with internalization and mastery goals. And teacher control is negatively correlated with the same. So this is one long sentence because there's actually two studies there that I've summarized. Now, what would a detailed summary look like? Well, a detailed summary would have to take into consideration why I'm interested in this study. And so if I'm interested in promoting um, students' internalization of mastery control, then there'd probably be quite a bit for me to look at. Um, but I'm more interested in engagement, um, motivation levels, um, significant learning experiences. So if I decided to measure my own support of students' autonomy using this questionnaire, I'd want to know how it was validated, or at least that it was validated. So, um, yeah, I guess I, w I have no reason to give a more detailed summary than that. So I might, I might explain in a detailed summary I might explain how the test was validated, so the number of participants. No, stop making this bold. I might also explain or give examples of teacher control of students and autonomy support of those same students. Um, so each of those might be an extra sentence. Um, so again, my de detailed summary is not going to add a whole lot because I'm not really interested in validating tests. Um, so I guess the big rip here is just a quick summary. So let's move on to the next steps. How do I do an in-text citation? So I've pulled up the inside page of the APA Style Guide, 7th edition, and we're just going to look at the very bottom all right, so one author, two authors, three or more. Here are the rules. So there's our guide. Let me pull up the article again. How many authors do we have? We've got two. How do I list them? If it's parenthetical, I just put the, the names of the authors like this, first and last with the ampersand. If I put it in narrative, I would put um, first, or I guess last name and last name. So let me keep this down here as an example, and then pull up my summary, try to pull both of them at the same time. So I'm going to adjust my summary using a parenthetical citation. So how about, instead of saying authors, since these are people that are testing uh, or validating tests, I'll say researchers, and those researchers' names are Benita and Matos. So researchers validate a new test for students' perceptions of teachers, blah, 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 blah. So I put the name, um, the last names of the researchers in order that they appear. So Benita and Matos, or Matos um, as they occur, or as, as the order that they show up in on the actual article itself. And this is a parenthetical citation. Whoops.
parenthetical citation. That's what it would look like. If I wanted to do a narrative citation, that means I'm not hiding the author's names. I'm going to keep them up, actually. So I might even put in there or even put researchers Benita. Now, since I'm not putting it in parentheses, I have to spell out and. So researchers Benita and Matos, and then put the date, 2021, validate a new test for students' perceptions, blah, 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 blah. But notice, now the grammar has changed. So researchers have validated a new test. So researchers Benita and Matos, 2021, have validated a new test for students' perceptions of autonomy, for, or autonomy support. They found that teachers' autonomy support is positively correlated with blah, 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 blah. So see how that writing has changed. I'm going to keep it in there. So see how the, um, the way that I wrote changed a little bit based on whether I'm using a narrative or parenthetical citation. I like writing uh, narrative citations better. If I'm listing a lot of references or a lot of different authors, I'll use parenthetical citations. All right, so the last thing that I want to do or have you look at is an end of text reference. So how would you do an end of text reference? I copied this from the OWL at Purdue website. And so they have a, a HTML version of the a APA style guide. And so you can use this as an example. No matter how many authors there are listed, um, you would follow this guide. So this is multiple authors um, and an article. So I'm going to leave that up here. And take a look at, I'm going to delete this, pull up the article. So the first part, of course, are the author names. Benita. Right, so see, author, um, comma, first initial. And then if there's multiple initials, you would put the second initial too, but that looks like it's it. And Matos L, and that's it. So there's only two authors. I've done the ampersand. I'm following the guide, uh, capitalize. Um, let me not make it bold so it's not confusing. The year was 2021, and that is shown right up here, published February 2021. You don't have to put the date generally unless... Um, it was published in a, a digital periodical. Then you put the title, Internalization of Mastery Goals. Now notice, I'm not capitalizing all of these words, even though they're capitalized in the title. So the title of the article, in this example, title of article, you only capitalize the first word of the sentence, I guess, or of the title, and then the first word of the subtitle. So there's a colon right here, and so this is the second title or the subtitle. So that would look like this. The differential effect of teachers, autonomy, support, and control. So now I've got the authors, the date, and the title of the article. Notice there's no italics, there's no uh, apostrophes or quotation marks. There's no bolding or underlining. This is an article title. It's just uh, upper and lowercase um, normal text. What do I do next? Title of periodical and volume number. So who published this? Looks like Frontiers in Psychology. Yep, and there it is again. So sometimes you'll see the publisher up here, but the actual journal name down at the bottom, but they say the same thing. So Frontiers in Psychology. Now notice I'm capitalizing Frontiers and Psychology because title of periodical, those are both capitalized. So you're going to capitalize all of the words in um, a journal title. There's a comma after it, volume number. This says volume number 11, so I'm just going to put 11. So that's all in italics. And then there's a, a parenthesis and issue number is not in italics. Notice, I'm just copying the format here and plugging in the information. So what is the issue number? 
Because this is an online article, there are not issue numbers, so all you have is the volume number and then the article number. I'm not sure about listing an article number, so I'm not going to do that. So journal title, um, journal issue, or in volume, no issue. So that's it. So then I write the pages. So it's pages 1 through... Fifteen. One through fifteen. And again, following, uh, I guess they, they don't give you an example. Um, so is that everything? Well, since there's no issue number, I guess you can put the DOI down here. And, yeah, I'm, this is still kind of new to me how to do DOI, so I just try to follow um, the HTTPS, so let me do that. HTTPS DOI.org, um, so you, then you have the, the number here, I guess it would be 10.3389, still following this example, and then the year uh, slash, yeah, I'm just going to type out that whole thing. So if you can still see it, it's right there. FSI 2020 um, And like I said, uh, this is still really new to me using DOIs. And so um, I haven't had a journal kick an article back yet for, for mis putting in the DOI wrong. All right, so now all I have to do is, is um, format it. Notice I'm not putting a period here because there's not a period in the DOI. So to format it, I need my indents. Oops, I'm trying to pull the article up. There we go. So that is the end of text reference. So I've got... Um, the end of text reference, I've got, well, I haven't really written a detailed summary, but I've got the brief summary. Um, hopefully, that's helpful for you. I'm um, seeing how I do it. I'd like for uh, my students, at least, to practice doing this with their articles, um, and we will be doing this for an assessment.